Hi, my name is David Warner Matheson, and today is the 1st of December. And so rising into view in the east after sunset, we have one of my favorite parts of the sky. It's a very dramatic part of the sky. And I'm just going to show you how I find the different constellations, starting with Orion. And many of you may be familiar with some or all of these constellations. Probably everybody's familiar with Orion and his spectacular belt of three stars. So starting with Orion, I'm going to show some of the other glorious, dazzling constellations and celestial features in this part of the sky that's now coming into view. In the northern hemisphere, it's winter. It's going towards winter, so we're going to see the winter circle. And these are the constellations that really dominate the sky during the winter months for the northern hemisphere. Let's go into Stellarium and just a note that objects in the actual sky will be much bigger than they appear on the screen here on Stellarium. And there's a little bit of distortion with Stellarium because it tries to wrap the sky around to kind of simulate what you would see if you're out underneath the night sky in person. Stellarium kind of tries to wrap around to simulate that uh, you know, 360 degree view that we have when we're actually outside. But these constellations, they look small on the screen. They're big and dazzling in the night sky. And of course, based on your latitude, you may or may not be able to see some or uh, some of the more northern ones if you're farther to the south or some of the more southern ones if you're farther to the north. But everybody, just about anywhere in the world, should be able to see most of these at least the ones that are closest to the celestial equator, which runs through the belt of Orion. So everybody can see the belt of Orion, no matter where you are on the planet, and then we'll go from there. So here we are in Stellarium. We are situated in the northern hemisphere at a latitude of plus 35 degrees, as you can see down in the lower left corner of your screen. And we're staring out towards the south and to the left you see the letters SE because we're facing south east is to our left so that's the southeast and to the right partly covered by the date and time you see the letters SW for southwest so we're looking pretty much towards the south and rising from the left side from the east we can see the glorious belt of Orion. So I'm going to outline Orion. This is the way I like to outline Orion to really emphasize those three belt stars. So using Orion as our landmark and our foundation for finding the other beautiful constellations and celestial features in this part of the sky, following the direction of Orion's belt up in the direction where his head and his shoulders are, Orion's going to be inverted if you're in the southern hemisphere to this orientation. This is the orientation from the northern hemisphere, but following the belt line up in the direction of his shoulders and head, you can get a good bead on the V-shaped Hyades, but the belt doesn't point directly to the V-shaped Hyades. So really, if you go from his shoulder and use that same direction that we just sketched out, the, the direction indicated by the belt. If you go through that upper shoulder and use the same direction, a parallel line to what comes if we shoot a line upward from his belt, you're going to get right to this big orange star called Aldebaran. The star Aldebaran is in the constellation of Taurus, the bull, and it's at the point of this V-shaped, very distinctive V-shaped grouping of stars that's known as the Hyades, the Hyades. So Aldebaran is at one end of the V, and then there's a distinctive V in the sky that you can find by following this line from Orion that I've just sketched out. Basically, the direction of his belt upwards towards the direction of his shoulders, but a parallel line from that going through his shoulder and parallel to the line 
of his belt will take you right to Aldebaran, and from there you can sketch out the Hyades. And the Hyades are this V-shaped jawbone of the bull. And so from the tips of the Hyades, the tips of that V, you can shoot a line out to the two horns of the bull of Taurus. So from the lower part of the V off of Aldebaran, the, the part that's closer to Orion, you get to one horn and then the other horn tip. So those are the long horns of the bull of Taurus the bull. Now I understand there's more stars to Taurus and really this is all you need to find Taurus. What I just sketched out, that's what I look for in the sky to find the constellation of Taurus. The V-shaped Hyades and then the long horns of the bull. The other stars are not as important other than the Pleiades. We'll come back to the Pleiades in a moment. But in order to get to the correct horns of the bull, we have to understand about some other stars nearby that it's easy to get confused and maybe draw the lines to the wrong stars. So from the V, Going straight out, you get to the horns, the tips of the horns of the bull. But nearby, there's another constellation, and I'm going to sketch it out now. And once you know how to find this constellation, then you'll know how to find the horns of the bull, because you'll be able to distinguish between the bright stars of this constellation and the tips of the horns of the bull. So this is the constellation of Ariga, the charioteer. And he has this peaked triangular cap, and then this tough looking face with a very strong jawline. You see that long jawline underneath his nose? His nose, H.A. Ray in the book, The Stars, A New Way to See Them, suggests that this tough charioteer looks like he's had his nose broken a couple of times. He's a pretty tough looking charioteer. Um, so down below his nose, you see kind of this pointed chin and this strong jawline. So if you're able to sketch out the outline of Ariga, which is basically straight up from the head and shoulders of Orion. Once you can see that jawline, then you can distinguish, okay, well the tips of the horns of the bull don't interfere with that jawline. So below the jawline, that's where the horn tips of Taurus are. It's not that difficult. Once you can see the jawline, then the horns of the bull those two stars of the horns of the bull will really stand out once you've differentiated them from the outline of the charioteer. Now, right above that tough looking nose is this uh, bright star. In fact, there's two bright stars, the eye and then on the other side at the base of his triangular cap. These two bright stars, I sometimes call them the, the false twins because they're so bright you might think, oh, that must be the stars of the Gemini twins. They're not. The bright star of the eye is Capella, and then the other star is called Menkelenin. Those two stars can easily be confused with the heads of the twins, but they're not, so I call them the false twins. They're basically straight up from the head and shoulders of Orion, but the real twins, the Gemini twins, are actually over here. Those are the two stars of the constellation Gemini, the zodiac constellation Gemini. So those two stars are Castor and Pollux in the twins of Gemini. And so let's see how to find Gemini in the sky. And the way I like to find it is by going up from the upper part of the belt of Orion, going up through that bright star in the shoulder with the upraised arm of Orion, that's Betelgeuse, that's the star Betelgeuse. Going up along that shoulder takes you to the twins. So the twins are more aligned with the shoulder and upraised arm of Orion, and then the charioteer is more up, straight up from the head of Orion. So over from the shoulder, following that line from the top of the belt over through Betelgeuse, that's how you get to the twins of Gemini, and there they are. That's the twins of Gemini. They look like two stick figures. And you start with the two heads. Castor and Pollux are the two bright stars of the Gemini twins. And Pollux is the brighter of the two. So Pollux was the 
immortal twin and Castor is the mortal twin. There are two twin brothers, but one of them is immortal and one of them is mortal. So then we come down. If we follow Orion's belt in the other direction from where we started, we'll get down towards the very bright star of Sirius. Sirius is known as the dog star because Sirius is in the constellation of the big dog or Canis Major. And the big dog follows along at the heels of Orion. And you can get down into the proper region of the sky by following the belt in the direction down towards the feet of Orion and instead of going up towards his shoulders. And you'll get down in the vicinity of Sirius in the constellation of Canis Major, the big dog. But the outline of the big dog is pretty faint. Sirius is very bright, but the rest of the stars are pretty faint. Other than there's four stars that are pretty bright in the big dog, and I'm going to outline those. This is what you'll probably, this is the shape that's most easy to see. It's kind of an oblong rectangle, not exactly a perfect rectangle. But if you are looking in the direction of Sirius, and those are the only four stars you can see, you can still imagine the shape of the big dog of Canis Major. And then there's also a little dog. So if we go up from Sirius along an arc that also includes Castor and Pollux, there's another star here that's called Procyon, which means before the dog. It rises before the big dog. So it's the name of the star is Procyon, before the dog. It comes up before the dog. And it's part of a little two-star constellation that's known as Canis Minor. That's the little dog. And so there's an arc. You can trace an arc. It's actually pretty circular when you see it in the sky. There's a little bit of distortion here in Stellarium. But there's a very distinctive clear arc that goes from these bright stars, connects Sirius up through Procyon, up through the heads of Castor and Pollux, and then over to the two bright stars in the Charioteer, ending up with Capella. And that's sometimes called the Winter Circle. And some people continue it around further, but those are the brightest stars in that arc. So we could call it the Winter Arc or the Winter Circle. But continuing in that kind of direction, let's go find the Pleiades now. So if we go up from Orion to get to the Hyades in Taurus, if we continue along past Aldebaran and the Hyades a little bit further, we will get to the beautiful Pleiades. And the Pleiades are really a dazzling, beautiful cluster of stars in the night sky. If you have binoculars, you can really see how many stars there are there in the Pleiades, but you can see them with the naked eye. But if you use binoculars, you can really start to see the Pleiades. And then, of course, if you use a telescope, you can see even more. But they're basically a little further along the same line that we took to get to Taurus and Aldebaran and the Hyades, and they're part of the constellation of Taurus. And so up from the Pleiades, we can find the constellation Perseus. The twisted foot of Perseus is just above the Pleiades, or points towards the Pleiades. Let me outline Perseus. So there's Perseus, and you can find Perseus by the Pleiades. The twisted foot of Perseus is very close to the Pleiades. Or if you can find Perseus, then you can use his foot to find the Pleiades as well. So Perseus is reaching out towards Andromeda. Perseus rescues Andromeda in the myths of ancient Greece. So to find Andromeda, the best way to find Andromeda is really to find the great square first. So I'm going to outline the great square. The great square has four fairly bright stars. It's very easy to find in the night sky. So the great square, when Orion is just rising up in the east, the great square should be pretty close to straight overhead or beginning to go towards the west. But you can find the great square, and then in between the great square and Perseus, that's where we're going to find Andromeda. So here's the outline of Andromeda, stretching between the great square and Perseus. And then the great square is actually, the full name is the great square of Pegasus. 
on the other side of the great square from Andromeda is the outline of the winged horse of Pegasus. It's a little bit challenging, but I'll outline it here. First, let's get to the mother of Andromeda. So just above Perseus is the W shape of Cassiopeia. That's the mother of Andromeda and must become the mother-in-law of Perseus when he marries Andromeda after he rescues her in the story. So then on the other side of the great square, we have the winged horse of Pegasus. On the great square, on the other side of the great square from Andromeda, we find the outline of Pegasus, the flying horse. And the great square is like his wings. So you can see he's got two tails. That's actually helpful to start with the tails and then go, I find it helpful to start with those two tails and then go over and find the head side of the horse and then from there trace out the rest of the body and the feet. So those are some brilliant constellations that are visible now in this time of year in the month of December and I just wanted to sketch those out and show how I kind of walk my way across the sky starting with Orion to find these different constellations in the night sky of December in the glorious winter circle and all the other companions of Orion in the sky at this time of year.